The MOS of a 91 Bravo in the United States Army is a wheeled vehicle mechanic. Now before we get started with the brief summary of this MOS in the United States Army, make sure you subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so that you can join the notification platoon and get alerts as soon as new videos drop as well as live streams. So with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the job duties of a wheeled vehicle mechanic in the United States Army. The primary duties of a 91 Bravo is going to include things like vehicle maintenance, inspection, as well as vehicle recovery. You're basically a mechanic that works on wheeled vehicles, but you're also kind of like a tow truck driver in some ways. Basically, if a vehicle goes down somewhere, then they have what's called a wrecker that they would use to go recover these vehicles to be able to tow them basically back to the maintenance bay or to where they need to be recovered and taken back to. Now this MOS is available for active duty National Guard as well as reserves in the United States Army. And the qualifications to get this MOS is going to include having a high school diploma or GED as well as passing the ASVAB. Now there is a minimum score that you're going to have to get in the ASVAB to qualify for this MOS, but there's two ways you can qualify for this MOS. The first way is scoring a 92 in the mechanical maintenance section of the ASVAB. And the second way is to score an 87 in the mechanical section of the ASVAB, but you also need an 85 in the general technical section of the ASVAB. So let's break down what is included in those two sections of the ASVAB. Now the mechanical maintenance section of the ASVAB contains three parts that make up that score. That is going to be made up of auto and shop, mechanical comprehension, and electronics information. Now to get a score of an 85 in the general technical section of the ASVAB, that is gonna come from three topics. That being word knowledge, paragraph comprehension, and arithmetic reasoning. Now the training to become a 91 Bravo in the United States Army is going to include the basic 10 weeks of basic training. And from there, an individual will go on to 13 weeks of AIT at Fort Lee, Virginia. And before I get some of the comments in the comment sections, maybe from some previous 91 Bravos talking about their AIT was at this location, well, it has moved around a little bit. Now back in the day, it was at Aberdeen Proving Grounds, but then from there, it was moved to Fort Jackson. And then from there, it got moved again to Fort Lee. Now this was actually the MOS I was interested in when I was joining the Army, but Due to a color stigmatism or partial color blindness, I got disqualified from this MOS. And I'm kind of glad because uh, later I kind of lost interest and patience to be a mechanic, as well as I saw what it was like once I was in the Army. And these guys work really hard. These individuals are working late nights, early mornings, some crazy you know, time frames to get vehicles up and running for missions or just to get vehicles that are, say, deadline, which means they're not mission capable up and being able to accomplish missions. So these individuals are going to be working in the motor pool, doing maintenance on vehicles, fixing vehicles that are down, getting them ready, uh, doing a lot of this during training as well as in a combat zone. This is one of those MOSs where it doesn't matter if you are in garrison, if you are in the field, or if you're deployed. You're pretty much doing the same job all the time. So you always pretty much have a job to do. Now, especially like when I was deployed, mechanics worked really late at night. You know, the male or female soldiers were there you know, working late at night, trying to get trucks up for mission the next day, or trying to get vehicles that were damaged, you know, back to being fully mission capable to be able to execute these missions. And sometimes that required them being there until midnight, one o'clock in the morning, all night, and kind of doing some kind of shift to be able to, you know, swap out with another mechanic to continue work on this vehicle. So it is a very, you know, tough job. But if you are someone who is interested in working on wheeled vehicles, then, you know, just expect, you know, it to be a tough job and a lot of work involved with this job. But this job does translate to the civilian world quite easily. You can easily be a mechanic in the United States Army and go into the civilian world and still be a mechanic. In fact, a lot of the mechanics that I knew that were in the Army do that now on the civilian side. They pretty much just transitioned straight over to being a mechanic on the civilian side. Having that military experience does help them get their ASE certification, which is the certification that you need to be a mechanic on the civilian side, because to get that certification, you need two years of experience in that field. Well, being in the United States Army would accomplish that. You just simply need to take the certification test to be able to get that ASE certification to be able to work on the civilian side. So it's quite easy to be able to transition from that military side to that civilian side. But of course, for those individuals that maybe don't want to be a mechanic in the civilian world after they did it in the army, they can easily use those skills to transition over to another career field or even use their GI Bill or college education kind of funding to be able to you know, get some kind of degree in some other area and you know, pursue that if they wanted to. But it is quite easy to transition from the military side to the civilian side for this MOS. So for some of my 91 Bravo viewers out there who were you know, previously in that MOS or currently in that MOS, leave some comments down in the comment section about your experience in that MOS, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. And if any of you out there are interested in being a 91 Bravo in the United States Army and you have some questions, make sure to drop them down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer what I can. If I can't, then hopefully some of my veteran viewers can help me out and answer your questions for you. 
So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you show it some love by hitting that like button. If you have an MOS you're interested in, make sure to leave it down in the comment section as I look to that for motivation. Be sure to check out some of the links down in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos, and I'll see you next time. See ya.